Picture this, a strikingly handsome man with piercing blue eyes, not just an actor, but a legend. Paul Newman, a name synonymous with classic Hollywood allure, a heartthrob on screen and a humanitarian off screen. 20 Iraq. Yeah, 500 Iraq. I can't get you. Oh, are you serious? <laughs> I never kid about money. But how did this man, known for his iconic roles in salad dressing, navigate the labyrinth of fame, racing, and philanthropy? Strap in as we peel back the layers of Newman's life, delving into the enigma of a man who was much more than just a pretty face. The rise to stardom. Paul Newman's journey to stardom was not a tale of overnight success, but a testament to perseverance and talent. Born on January 26, 1925 in Shaker Heights, Ohio, Newman was bitten by the acting bug early in his life. Despite serving in the Navy during World War II, his passion for acting remained undimmed. After the war, Newman attended Kenyon College, where he engaged in theater, setting the stage for his future. His initial foray into professional acting wasn't a walk in the park. Struggling in New York, Newman did various odd jobs while honing his craft in the renowned actor's studio. It was here that he developed his signature method acting style, a technique that would later define his performances. The struggle was real, but so was Newman's determination. Newman's breakthrough came in 1954 with The Silver Chalice. Despite considering his performance in this film a personal embarrassment, it put him on the map. Then came Somebody Up There Likes Me, in 1956, where he played boxer Rocky Graziano. The film was a critical and commercial success, showcasing Newman's capacity to bring complex characters to life. His portrayal of Graziano was just a glimpse of the versatile actor he was destined to become. The late 1950s and 1960s marked the era of Newman's most iconic roles. Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, 1958, saw him alongside Elizabeth Taylor, portraying the tormented Brick Pollitt. This role earned him his first Academy Award nomination. The final award of the evening, the one for Best Picture. The accolades didn't stop there. Films like The Hustler, 1961, HUD, 1963, and Cool Hand Luke, 1967, further cemented his status as a Hollywood heavyweight. His roles were not just characters, they were profound reflections of the human condition, often flawed yet relatable. One cannot talk about Newman's rise without mentioning Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, 1969. Teaming up with Robert Redford, Newman delivered a performance that was both charismatic and nuanced. The chemistry between Newman and Redford was palpable, making the film a timeless classic and a high point in Newman's career. Apart from his acting prowess, Newman was also known for his strikingly good looks. His blue eyes weren't just a window to his soul, but also a passport to the hearts of millions. Yet, Newman never let his looks define him. He was determined to be recognized for his talent, not just his appearance. This resolve set him apart in an industry often swayed by superficial allure. By the 1970s, Newman was not just an actor, but a director and a philanthropist. His directorial debut, Rachel Rachel, 1968, received critical acclaim. Meanwhile, his philanthropic efforts, though not as publicized, were beginning to take shape. He co-founded Newman's Own, a food company that donates all profits to charity, a testament to his altruistic nature, iconic roles and cinematic triumphs. Paul Newman's cinematic journey was a mosaic of roles that defined not just his career, but also an era in Hollywood. Each character he portrayed was a testament to his versatility and depth as an actor. After his early successes, Newman continued to captivate audiences with a series of remarkable performances. In The Hustler, 1961, he played Fast Eddie Felsen, a small-time pool hustler with big dreams. This role, brimming with raw emotion and a gritty edge, earned Newman another Oscar nomination. The film's success wasn't just in its box office numbers, but in how Newman brought a complex, flawed character to life making audiences root for him despite his shortcomings. In HUD, 1963, Newman took on a role that was a departure from his previous characters. Playing HUD Bannon, a charismatic yet morally ambiguous anti-hero, 
Newman showcased his ability to portray unsympathetic characters with a charm that made them irresistible to watch. His performance in HUD was a masterclass in nuanced acting, earning him accolades and further solidifying his status in Hollywood. Perhaps one of Newman's most iconic roles came in Cool Hand Luke, 1967. As Luke Jackson, a nonconformist who refuses to submit to the brutal life in a Florida prison camp, Newman delivered a performance that was both powerful and poignant. The film's famous line, What we've got here is failure to communicate, Love me, hate me, kill me, anything, just let me know it, became synonymous with Newman's image as the handsome rebel, a role that seemed to mirror his off-screen persona. Newman's collaboration with Robert Redford in Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, 1969, marked a high point in his career. The chemistry between the two actors, combined with Newman's charismatic portrayal of Butch Cassidy, made the film an instant classic. It was a blend of adventure, humor, and drama, all wrapped in the charm of Newman's performance. In the 1970s, Newman's career took a turn towards more challenging roles. The Sting, 1973, again with Redford, was a critical and commercial triumph. Newman's portrayal of Henry Gondorf, a seasoned con artist, showcased his ability to balance charm and depth in a single character. The film won seven Academy Awards, including Best Picture, and cemented Newman's place as a Hollywood legend. But Newman's talents were not just limited to acting. His directorial ventures, though few, were impactful. Rachel Rachel, 1968, directed by Newman and starring his wife Joanne Woodward, was a critical success. It demonstrated his skill behind the camera and his ability to tell stories with sensitivity and insight. Newman's career in the 1980s and 1990s saw him taking on more mature roles. In The Verdict, 1982, he played Frank Galvin, a down-and-out lawyer who seeks redemption in a medical malpractice case. His performance was a powerful portrayal of despair, determination, and redemption, earning him yet another Oscar nomination. It wasn't until 1986 that Newman finally won the Academy Award for Best Actor for reprising the role of Fast Eddie Felsen in The Color of Money, a sequel to The Hustler. This win was seen as a long overdue recognition of his immense talent and contribution to cinema. Newman's later years in cinema were marked by a shift towards more character-driven roles. In films like Nobody's Fool, 1994, and Road to Perdition, 2002, he delivered performances that were both understated and powerful, showcasing the range of his acting abilities even in his senior years. Throughout his career, Newman was not just an actor but a symbol of a certain kind of American cinema, one that valued depth, complexity, and charisma. His roles often challenged the status quo, reflected societal issues, and resonated with audiences across generations. Each character he played added a unique shade to his legacy as an actor. Racing Passion and Philanthropic Heart Beyond the silver screen, Paul Newman's life was driven by two profound passions, motor racing and philanthropy. These aspects not only enriched his life, but also left a significant mark on the world. Newman's love for racing was not a mere celebrity whim. It was a deep-seated passion that he pursued with the same intensity as his acting. <laughs> Why are you crazy? The fall will probably kill you. His entry into the racing world began somewhat serendipitously during the filming of Winning in 1969, where he played a race car driver. This role sparked an interest that turned into a lifelong affair with motorsports. What set Newman apart in the racing community was his genuine talent and dedication. He wasn't just another actor playing at being a racer. He was fiercely competitive and skilled. Newman started racing professionally in 1972, competing in Sports Car Club of America, SCCA events. His dedication to the sport was remarkable. He wasn't just racing for publicity, he was there to win. In 1979, Newman achieved a remarkable feat by finishing second at the 24 Hours of Le Mans. And Paul Newman wins his fourth national championship. 
one of the most prestigious automobile races in the world. This accomplishment was not just a personal victory, but a testament to his skill and determination as a racer. Over the years, Newman would continue to race and win in various events, even into his 70s, proving that age was just a number for him. Parallel to his racing career, Newman's philanthropic efforts were equally noteworthy. In 1982, he co-founded Newman's Own, a food company that started with salad dressing and expanded into a range of products. The unique aspect of this venture was its business model. All after-tax profits would be donated to charity. This endeavor reflected Newman's belief in giving back to society and using his fame for a greater good. Since its inception, Newman's Own has donated over $500 million to various charitable organizations around the world. The Newman's Own Foundation, born from the company's profits, supports causes ranging from children's charities to disaster relief efforts. Newman's vision for a business that serves a philanthropic purpose was pioneering and set a precedent for corporate social responsibility. One of Newman's most significant philanthropic contributions was to children with serious illnesses. In 1988, he founded the Hole in the Wall Gang Camp in Connecticut, named after the gang in Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. This camp offered a fun, safe, and nurturing environment for children with serious health conditions, completely free of charge. The concept expanded globally, leading to the establishment of several similar camps and programs, bringing joy and hope to thousands of children and their families. These endeavors revealed a side of Newman that the public rarely saw in his films, a compassionate, altruistic individual deeply concerned with the well-being of others. His philanthropy was not about self-promotion. It was a genuine effort to make a difference. Watching children that have had the bad luck of being hit with a, a life-threatening disease, um, the reciprocity that occurs between the campers and the staff people. Newman often stated that he considered his philanthropic work to be his greatest legacy, surpassing his cinematic achievements. Newman's passion for racing and his philanthropic efforts were interconnected in many ways. He often used his racing events to raise awareness and funds for his charitable causes. His celebrity status brought attention to the charities he supported, while his hands-on approach in both racing and philanthropy reflected his commitment to his passions. The Humanitarian Legacy Paul Newman's legacy extends far beyond the silver screen. His profound impact as a humanitarian is a story of selflessness and dedication, a narrative that beautifully intertwines with his life as a Hollywood icon. Newman's foray into philanthropy was as much a part of his identity as his roles in cinema. The inception of Newman's Own, the food company that donates all profits to charity, was just the beginning. This pioneering business model set a precedent in the corporate world illustrating that commercial success and social responsibility could coexist harmoniously. By the end of his life, Newman's Own had donated over $500 million to a myriad of charitable causes, a figure that has only grown since then. The most remarkable aspect of Newman's philanthropic efforts was the range of causes he supported. From children's charities to disaster relief, his contributions addressed various societal needs, Newman's own foundation, established to carry on the work of the parent company, continues to fund and support numerous initiatives worldwide, focusing on areas like nutrition, empowerment, and children with life-limiting conditions. Newman's heart particularly went out to children facing adversity. The hole in the wall gang camp, named after the gang in Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, was a testament to this. Founded in 1988, the camp offered a haven where children with serious illnesses could enjoy life beyond their medical conditions. The camp was not just a place for fun, it was a community that fostered strength, confidence, and joy. The success of this camp led to the formation of similar camps globally, expanding Newman's vision across continents. The camps were designed to be more than just a temporary retreat. They aimed to enrich the lives of these children providing experiences that fostered resilience and happiness. These initiatives were a clear reflection of Newman's belief in the transformative power of kindness and joy, 
especially for those in difficult circumstances. Newman's humanitarian work extended to supporting veterans, environmental conservation, and education. He was actively involved in raising awareness and funds for these causes, often using his influence to bring attention to underrepresented issues. His commitment to these causes was personal and hands-on, reflecting a philanthropic philosophy rooted in empathy and action. One of the key elements of Newman's humanitarian legacy was his ability to inspire others to give back. He leveraged his fame not for personal gain, but to highlight issues and encourage public involvement. His approach to philanthropy was grounded in the belief that everyone, regardless of their status, could make a positive impact on society. Perhaps the most significant aspect of Newman's humanitarian legacy is its sustainability. The structures he established, from Newman's own to the various camps and foundations, were designed to outlive him. These institutions continue to thrive, upholding his vision and expanding his philanthropic reach. The Newman's Own Foundation remains a major player in philanthropy, guided by Newman's principles and dedication to making the world a better place. Getting to see these kids in a camp environment is just so special for me. As a former camper, I've seen just how much those things mean. Moreover, Newman's approach to philanthropy has inspired countless individuals and organizations to adopt similar models of giving back. His belief in the power of good works as a driving force for positive change has become a guiding light for modern philanthropy. Personal Life and Relationships Paul Newman, an enigmatic figure in Hollywood, led a personal life marked by depth, complexity, and enduring relationships. His life off-screen was as rich and nuanced as the characters he portrayed on it. Born in 1925 in Shaker Heights, Ohio, to Arthur and Teresa Newman, Paul was the second of two children. His father ran a successful sporting goods store, and his mother was a homemaker who nurtured his early interest in theater. This supportive environment played a crucial role in shaping his aspirations. Newman's first marriage was to Jackie Witta, with whom he had three children, Scott, Susan, and Stephanie. This period was one of personal and professional growth, as Newman balanced his responsibilities as a father with his burgeoning acting career. However, as his star rose in Hollywood, his marriage to Witta strained and eventually ended in divorce in 1958. The most significant relationship in Newman's life was with actress Joanne Woodward. They met while performing in the Broadway production of Picnic in 1953. Newman and Woodward shared a deep connection, both personally and professionally. They married in 1958, a union that would last 50 years until Newman's death. Together, they had three daughters, Eleanor, Melissa, and Claire. Woodward was not just Newman's wife, but his collaborator and confidant. They starred in many films together, including The Long, Hot Summer, 1958, and Mr. and Mrs. Bridge, 1990. Their relationship was one of mutual respect and admiration, a rarity in Hollywood. They navigated the challenges of fame while maintaining a strong, loving partnership. Tragedy struck the Newman family in 1978 when Newman's only son, Scott, died of an accidental overdose of alcohol and pills. Scott's death was a devastating blow to Newman, who spoke openly about the pain of losing a child. In response to this tragedy, Newman founded the Scott Newman Center for Drug Abuse Prevention, channeling his grief into a cause that would help others. Newman and Woodward shared many interests, including a love for the arts and philanthropy. They were often seen at charitable events, film festivals, and theater productions, supporting each other's endeavors. Their shared passion for acting and dedication to social causes were the pillars of their relationship. Away from the public eye, Newman was known for his love of privacy and a simple lifestyle. Despite his fame, he preferred a quiet life in Westport, Connecticut, where he and Woodward raised their children. He was an avid car enthusiast, a passion that extended beyond racing to collecting vintage automobiles. Newman's relationship with Woodward was a testament to enduring love in an industry often characterized by fleeting romances. Their marriage was a journey of companionship, mutual growth, and shared values. Woodward was by his side during his final days, 
as Newman battled lung cancer. In his personal life, Newman was more than just a Hollywood star. He was a devoted husband, a loving father, and a man who faced life's challenges with resilience and grace. His relationships, particularly with Woodward, were integral to who he was as a person. Considering my parents, you know, they get better and better and better, right? They reflected his commitment to family, his capacity for deep love, and his ability to find strength in the face of adversity. The Final Curtain The final chapter in Paul Newman's life is a poignant reflection of his enduring spirit and the legacy he left behind. It is a story of a man who, even in his last moments, exemplified grace, courage, and an unyielding passion for life. I wish I knew as much about acting then as I knew now. In 2008, Paul Newman faced his most challenging role yet battling lung cancer. True to his character, he confronted his illness with the same resilience and privacy he maintained throughout his life. Despite his declining health, Newman's spirit remained unbroken, and he continued to engage in his philanthropic work and spend time with his family. As news of his illness became public, tributes poured in from all corners of the world. Fans, fellow actors, and those who had been touched by his philanthropic efforts shared their admiration and respect for the man who had brought so much to so many. These tributes were a testament to the impact Newman had not just as an actor, but as a humanitarian and a symbol of integrity. Paul Newman passed away on September 26, 2008, at the age of 83, in the comfort of his home in Westport, Connecticut. Hollywood legend is gone. Actor Paul Newman has died of cancer this weekend at the age of 83. His death marked the end of an era in Hollywood and left a void that would be hard to fill. The news was met with global mourning, as millions felt the loss of a man who had been part of their lives through his films and philanthropic endeavors. Hollywood royalty, the late actor and philanthropist Paul Newman, still making life better, especially for children. In the wake of his passing, Newman's family, friends and fans gathered to celebrate his life. Memorials were held, stories were shared, and his life's work was commemorated. It was clear that Newman's legacy would live on through the countless lives he had touched, both on and off the screen. One of the most significant aspects of Newman's legacy is the continuation of his philanthropic work. Newman's own foundation carried on his vision, ensuring that his commitment to charity and social causes lived on. The foundation continues to donate to various charities, and the Hole in the Wall Gang camps still provide joy and respite for children with serious illnesses. As the world reflected on Newman's life, it became evident that his greatest legacy was the way he lived his life. He was remembered not just for his cinematic achievements, but for his kindness, his dedication to helping others, and his love for his family. His marriage to Joanne Woodward remained a symbol of true partnership and love. If you can yell and kiss, you're pretty safe. You can have a pretty safe career. And that's not the way it ought to be. Newman's influence extends beyond his lifetime, inspiring future generations of actors, philanthropists, and individuals who aspire to make a difference. His life is a blueprint for using one's talents and resources to leave a positive imprint on the world. In Hollywood, Newman is remembered as one of the greatest actors of his time, a professional who brought depth, complexity, and humanity to every role he played. His films continue to be celebrated and studied, and his style of acting remains influential in the industry. In reflecting on the life of Paul Newman, it's evident that his journey was about much more than fame and success. It was a journey marked by personal growth, a relentless pursuit of passion, and a deep commitment to making the world a better place. His final curtain was not just the end of a life, but the culmination of a legacy that continues to resonate. Reflections on a Legend As we reflect on the multifaceted life of Paul Newman, it becomes evident that his story is not just one of fame and success, but of profound humanity and enduring impact. This chapter seeks to encapsulate the essence of Newman as an actor, a philanthropist, a family man, and above all, a human being with an unwavering commitment to living life on his own terms. Newman's career in Hollywood is marked by an array of diverse and powerful performances. 
His ability to bring depth and nuance to every role set him apart as one of the finest actors of his generation. From the rebellious Luke in Cool Hand Luke to the slick and savvy Henry Gondorf in The Sting, Newman's range as an actor was unparalleled. He was a craftsman who painstakingly honed his skills, bringing an authenticity to his roles that resonated with audiences worldwide. His legacy in cinema is not just a collection of great films, but a testament to the art of acting. Equally significant is Newman's legacy as a philanthropist. His creation of Newman's own and the hole in the wall gang camps exemplifies his commitment to using his fame for the greater good. His philanthropic model was groundbreaking, showing that it was possible to successfully blend business with social responsibility. Through his generosity, Newman impacted the lives of countless individuals, particularly children battling serious illnesses. His dedication to charitable causes was a reflection of his deep empathy and compassion for those in need. At the core of Newman's life was his family. His love story with Joanne Woodward is one of Hollywood's most enduring romances. I don't know what to say. Well, don't say anything. You know me, I've always got something to say. Their partnership, both on and off screen, was built on mutual respect and shared values. Newman also faced personal tragedies, most notably the loss of his son, Scott. His response to this tragedy, establishing the Scott Newman Center, demonstrated his strength and ability to channel grief into helping others. Newman's role as a father and husband was as integral to his identity as his public persona. Away from the limelight, Newman was a man of varied interests and passions. His love for racing and car collecting was more than a hobby. It was a reflection of his adventurous spirit and his love of competition. Despite his fame, Newman maintained a sense of normalcy and privacy, choosing to live a life away from the glitz of Hollywood. He was an individual who, despite his celebrity status, remained grounded and true to his beliefs and values. Newman's influence extends beyond the realms of cinema and philanthropy. He remains an icon, not just for what he achieved, but for how he lived. His commitment to authenticity, his dedication to his craft, and his unwavering moral compass serve as an inspiration to future generations. Newman exemplified that one could achieve tremendous success while maintaining integrity and a sense of social responsibility. As we reflect on the life of Paul Newman, we see a mosaic of a man who was as complex and captivating off-screen as he was on it. His journey was characterized by its highs and lows, triumphs and challenges, but through it all, Newman remained steadfast in his principles and commitment to living a life of purpose. He was more than just a Hollywood star. He was a beacon of resilience, generosity, and human spirit.